Hi folks, Jonathan here again with a third update on my researches into the Upton area and this time I want to focus on the beginnings of St James's Mission House. As it is recorded in the Torquay Times and Southern Devon Advertiser for Friday March the 27th 1891. And as might be expected from a newspaper that is an advertiser, the front page is full of adverts. The most prominent being the Under New Management Falcon Hotel in Torquay, the Westford and Rolston Tailors, the St Mary Church Brewery and an advert for organic and artificial manure. Meanwhile, on page two, the first news article is a report from the Tor and Upton Ratepayers Association who it seems had another lively meeting with mutual recriminations. Perhaps a precursor to that infamous recent Zoom meeting of the Hanford Parish Council. But moving swiftly on to page three, and there we find a report that is over 1,650 words long and is entitled New Mission Church for Upton. And I'm inclined to suggest that you rarely get articles like this in newspapers today. Especially because it begins with a 122 word, 15 line, single sentence, which would suggest to me that the editor may have been away that week. But it does paint the background <clears throat> and says the growth of population in the Upton district has naturally directed attention to the spiritual needs of the people which have completely outgrown the accommodation of the mission cottage. And a movement originated some time ago, which it is hoped will eventually result in the creation of a new ecclesiastical district. And the erection of a permanent church was advanced a stage on Saturday when the cornerstone of a mission house, now being erected on land, which had been generously given by Dr by Mr W Lavers of Upton Lee as a site for a future church was laid by the donor of the land who further demonstrated a very practical interest in the movement by subscribing £500 towards the building fund. This or that is a sentence worthy of the Apostle Paul. But it's followed by a description of what the building was going to be like. The salient points being it was to be a substantial stone building designed in the domestic Gothic style of architecture. The main area of a nave and chancel hall would seat about 250 people. There was to be a large room at the back to serve as a vestry and classroom. There was also a room for other meetings. It was hoped to use ornamental tiles on the floor of the chancel. Uh, there was a hope that some of the windows would be stained glass. The porch was to be 10 feet from the road with a bell tower on top of it, reaching to a height of 50 feet. The walls of the building were to be dressed in li local limestone with limestone coins and weatherings of Barton stone and the window dressings consisting of a selection of beer stone and red brick. The contractor's estimate was about £500. That's the equivalent of around £65,000 today, but this did not include seating and other fittings. The architects were Messrs Richards and Harrison and the contractor's, Miss, <laughs> and the contractor's Messrs A and S Trithui. The article then moves on to describe the ceremony witnessed by a large number of people interested in the parish work of Upton. The choir and clergy met in the mission cottage and proceeded thence to the site of the new mission house, singing the hymn, The Church's One Foundation. A short service was conducted by the Reverend Prebendry Wolfe, the previous rector, the Reverend E.P. Gregg, the then rector, Reverend E. A. Wilson, who's a curate, and it was assisted by Dr. Paget Blake. There is then a list of the people who were present at the ceremony. 
by my calculation, well over 60 people attended this event. We also learn that the choir was conducted by F.J. Crow, organist and choir master of Upton, who accompanied the psalms and hymns upon the harmonium. The arrangements were made for the ceremony by Mr. W. L. Bridgman and Mr. J. J. Matthews, the church wardens, and they were very satisfactory. An interesting assessment of the service. We then have a description of the laying of the foundation stone. Mr. Lavers, having adjusted the stone, declared it duly laid, saying, in the faith of Jesus Christ, we place this cornerstone in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here, let true faith, the fear of God, and brotherly love ever remain. And then, whilst the hymn was being sung, a collection, which amounted to the sum of £25, was made, and that's over £3,000 today. And we then learn that in a cavity beneath the stone was deposited a document which set forth the circumstances under which the mission house was about to be erected and gave the names of the clergy and other church officers of Upton. It would be interesting to know if it's still there. The Reverend Prebendary Wolfe, who had been rector from 1848 to 1883, said a few words. He told the assembled gathering that this was a day of very great rejoicing, for he had long wished for the commencement of the work which they had now seen inaugurated and which they hoped would eventually result in the erection of a permanent church for that end of Upton. He went on to recount how this parish had been divided four times as the population grew and Thanks were now due to God for having put it into the heart of another friend to erect that building. The speech by Reverend Prebendary Wolf continues. Some years ago, it was in his mind to build a mission church for that part of the parish. And Mr. Lavers had generously given them the building about to be erected there and would no doubt take the greatest interest in the erection of the church which they hoped was to follow. That effort, however, was only preparatory to the building up of that spiritual house, which, after all, was their great object, and let them pray that many in the village might become cornerstones in the spiritual temple of God. In conclusion, he had thanked Mr. Lavers for his great liberality, and he was sure all present would join with him in expressing gratitude that it had pleased God to put it into his heart to be so generous towards the poor of the lower part of the parish of Upton. William Lavers, who was the generous giver, then said a few words, saying, There was very little praise due to him. It was due to the giver of all good things. Uh, in this connection, he would remind them of that passage of scripture. Who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou hast not received? Which comes from 1 Corinthians 4 verse 7. And for those of us not au fait with the language of the King James Bible, is in the NIV translated as, For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? Praise was therefore not due to him, Mr. Lavers, that he had the means to give for the mission house. It was due to that God who had made him an almoner of his bounty. After some more background details, Mr. Lavers went on to say that everybody agreed that the best way to get a congregation was to begin with a small room, then increase to a mission house and then have a church. According to Derek Seymour in Upton, the heart of Torquay, the first group began meeting in 1879 in a room at Prospect Place in Parkfield Road. And in 1887, they began renting a mission cottage, which was 19 Vale Cottages, but in 1963 was 227 Lymington Road. And this is what it looks like today, courtesy of Google Earth. According to the actual lease document for the Mission Hall 19 Vale Cottages, Upton Vale, Torquay, the record of which is held by the Devon Archives and Local Study Service, the rent was £18 a year for five years from 1887. And the agreement was between Joseph Chave of Torquay, a builder, and the Reverend Greg, a 
clerk in holy orders, and William Ball Jr., Esquire, both of Torquay. As an aside, the entry for 19 Vale Cottages in the 1891 census, taken on the 5th of April of that year, it records that the address was occupied by George and Louisa Blank with their daughter Mary. It is also possible to find the 1891 census entry for William Lavers of Upton Lee, who was living with his wife and sister, but had four domestic servants, one of whom was a widow, a gardener, who was also a widower, a housekeeper, who was the daughter of the gardener, and a nurse. But back to the ceremony. William Lavers finishes by saying that they should all unite in endeavouring to get together as large a congregation as they could to hear God's message proclaimed that salvation for sinners could only be obtained through the Lord Jesus Christ. The census entry perhaps reveals that William Laver has felt very blessed by God, and this accounts for his opening words that his generosity was due to the giver of all good things. He actually died in September 1894, and his obituary in the Torquay Times is well worth reading. He was undoubtedly a humble man with a missionary heart who gave what resources he had in the service of others in Torquay. Perhaps the challenge for us as the Together Church is to follow his example. The article finishes by saying, the proceedings closed with the singing of the doxology, after which Mr. J.C. Dinham of Union Street took a very effective photograph. It would be interesting to know whether that very effective photograph still exists somewhere. I will produce another update on the actual opening of the building later that year, which is also described in the Torquay Times. In the meantime, if anyone has any comments, suggestions or questions, do let me know. So, thanks for watching.